Welcome. This is a brief demonstration of a fraud investigation scenario using GeoTime. The scenario is completely fictional, but based on research into well-documented money laundering methods. The scenario involves a suspicious activity report, or a SAR, made to authorities in reference to activity that occurred in an individual's bank account over a 45-day period. The scenario is meant to be illustrative of GeoTime's capability to assist fraud analysis, so it does not have the data complexity that an actual case would have. So let's begin. In this view, I've already loaded the suspect's financial information into GeoTime. His fictional name is Jeffrey Dim. The data contains all transactions for his bank account for the 45-day period described in the SAR. I have already cleaned out routine debit and check transactions that reflect typical purchases, bill payments, and the like. In this view, solid lines represent movement of the various entities. So for example, movement of Jeffrey Dim from the Cicero, Illinois area to the northwest suburbs of Chicago is represented by a solid line. Arrows represent financial transactions between entities. So a deposit made in an ATM that moves into someone's bank account is represented by an arrow drawn from the ATM location to the bank location. Since this view represents activity over time, the most recent events are the closest ones to the ground plane. This view is complex. There's a lot of data on display, so I start by isolating the suspect's activity. From the isolated view, we can easily see that the suspect makes regular trips from Cicero, Illinois to the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Further, we can see clusters of activity in both areas. Zooming in on one of these clusters reveals a group of multiple cash deposits via ATM. This is the suspicious activity described as possible structuring behavior in the SAR. Zooming back out, it's easy to see the pattern of deposit clusters occurring in the various locations visited by the subject over the 45-day period. So when I chart events according to transaction type, I color code them so I can easily visualize a mixture of transactions recorded for the suspect. Doing that, I can see that cash deposits represent the majority of transactions during the period. Now I want to see what other entities are connected to the suspect with transactions. For example, I want to see if the suspect moved money to any businesses or other bank accounts or other people. For this, I can use the link analysis tool. When I select the suspect and run the tool, it shows me that the suspect is directly connected to an entity called Chicagoland Used Cars. When I examine the direct links between them, they reveal that the transactions are bank drafts in amounts less than $10,000 paid to Chicagoland Used Cars. Link analysis also shows that the suspect received regular direct deposits from a company called Prestige Worldwide. Prestige Worldwide is a key to this scenario, so remember that name. At this point, the suspect's behavior and connections to other entities allows investigators to subpoena their records. So I've loaded mockups of those records into GeoTime, and now I can view relationships that don't directly involve the suspect. I'll start with Chicagoland used cars. Using link analysis reveals a connection to a company called Prestige Worldwide. Prestige Worldwide, as you remember, employs the suspect. According to the record, Chicagoland used cars made several purchases from Prestige Worldwide during the reported period. So, the suspect pays Chicagoland used cars with bank drafts, and Chicagoland used cars pays Prestige Worldwide, who then direct deposits payroll money back to the suspect. So, we've completed one circuit of the cash flow pattern. It's interesting, though, that Prestige Worldwide seems to do a lot of cash business, which may be important later.
there are other patterns visible as well. Using the Networks feature of GeoTime, I can create a 2D network diagram of all of the relationships in the dataset. From this diagram, it is easy to see what entities connect to others and how much relative activity occurred between them. From there, I can turn that into a 3D diagram that shows this activity over time. This view shows that money flowed between the suspect's family members and an individual named Julian Davis. I isolate Julian Davis's records. It's very enlightening because his account activity is anything but typical. When I color code the transactions by type, his accounts appear to contain wire transfers and cash withdrawals. The wire transfers reveal incoming money movement from the suspect's son, who is now a suspect in his own right. More interesting, however, are the cash withdrawals that occur after the wire transfers. The monetary amounts are a close match, but never identical, so Julian Davis seems to have been smart enough to cause some variation in the amounts to try to avoid detection. Julian Davis is probably smurfing for Jeffrey Dim, but because his account activity doesn't contain any routine purchases, it's possible he's a false identity. We need to ask where the cash goes, once Davis withdraws it. Geotime can't tell us directly, but we can use the visual tools to infer the cash flow. Remember Prestige Worldwide's many cash transactions. Well, when we plot those in the 3D network view next to the cash withdrawals from Julian Davis, we can see a pattern emerge. Many of the cash purchases occur shortly after Davis withdrew the cash from his account and the purchases were in very similar amounts to the withdrawals. Since we already know Prestige Worldwide funnels money back to the original suspect through payroll deposits, it's clear that these are fake purchases made to hide the origin of the money. This concludes my demonstration of how GeoTime can facilitate investigation of financial records for fraud, money laundering, or other similar types of cases. While this is a simple example, it highlights powerful pattern visualization and link analysis capabilities that are available in GeoTime. Thanks for watching.